We are officially at the halfway mark for Home Assistant releases this year with 2024.6 landing, which adds lots of good features, including improvements to the drag and drop sections, new sentences for assist, a new entity type, dashboard backgrounds, and matter updates. First up, however, we have two big features to improve voice capabilities in this release, with one in particular that has been a huge request over the last year with the rise of AI and LLMs. All the way back in the February release of 2023, when Home Assistant first started its year of the voice, they added what's called a conversation agent, which is essentially how you interact with Home Assistant and your voice. And this was really cool because although the focus was on creating their own local voice assistant where everything was processed locally, this conversation agent framework allowed you to swap between different types of conversation agent if you wanted to experiment with some others. And one of those back in 2023.2 was the open AI integration, which let you process your conversations in chat GPT essentially. Up until now though, only the local conversation agent has been able to actually control devices in your house. And those cloud ones like OpenAI or Google have been relegated to the camp of fun to play with, but not all that useful. However, in this release, those cloud conversation agents like OpenAI and Google can now actually control devices in Home Assistant if you let them. You do need to go into the settings of the integration and specifically allow control to devices. And I do like that this is off by default here. And then once you have added control, you can then use OpenAI or Google LLM integration to control devices like you would with Home Assistant's local voice agent. It's worth noting that you can control which entities are exposed to AI integrations, just in case you were particularly worried about sensitive ones that you might not necessarily want an AI to be able to control. It goes without saying here that large language models can and will hallucinate here and could potentially control the wrong device and generally do things that they aren't meant to do. And of course, it does mean that you are gonna be sending more information about your smart home to the cloud, where we don't always know what they are doing with the data. So just bear that in mind and remember that if you decide to use LLMs in Home Assistant. However, because they are LLMs, they do have a couple of advantages though over just a straight voice assistant, for example. Firstly, they obviously have access to a huge library of information and knowledge, meaning that you can ask pretty much any question you would want, assuming no hallucinations occur, and you'll probably get a fairly reasonable answer. It also means that unlike Home Assistant's local intent handling, phrases for controlling devices don't have to exactly match a set of pre-programmed sentences and almost allows for much more natural conversation. Finally, one of the big ones for me is that this now allows for contextual conversations because it can remember what was said previously within the last few minutes. Same as how ChatGPT does if you start talking to it. This poses the possibility for a really cool new world where voice can actually be much more proactive rather than reactive. For example, instead of waiting for you to say, hey, turn on the air purifier, what if your house was able to say to you instead, hey, I noticed the air quality is getting bad in the bedroom, do you want me to turn on the air purifier? And then it would wait for you to say yes or no. That's the type of thing I could see becoming really powerful with contextual conversations. And I'm not sure we are quite at that point with this just yet, but this update certainly goes a long way towards it. The other big feature to do with voice in this release is that there is now new controls over media players. As of this release, Assist can now control devices that play media in Home Assistant more better than ever before by adding context awareness to the commands. Up until now, it was possible to control some aspects of media players, but it was a little clunky as it required you to know the names of entities and names of your media players. However, in this release, you can now just say phrases like play, pause, resume, next, and set volume to a percentage, and Home Assistant will automatically control the media player in the room that you are currently in, assuming you have your media players assigned to an area. 
This is a really nice upgrade and it makes things just all that more user friendly. Next up, there is several improvements to dashboards and the UI in this release. One really cool one is that you can now conditionally control sections in the new drag and drop dashboard. So let's say you have a section that shows TV remote controls and has a bunch of buttons on it and you only want it to show when the TV is actually on so it doesn't clutter up your dashboard. You can now just create a simple condition for that entire section in the settings rather than using the conditional card. What's also super cool is that not only can you do an entire section, but you can also apply it directly to individual cards too. At the time of filming, this isn't showing in the UI just yet, but you can add it via YAML, so hopefully it will be added to the UI by the time of release. Another dashboard feature in this release is that you can now set a background image on dashboards. This was previously possible via YAML and or community made stuff, but now this can be done right from inside of the UI by editing your view and adding an image, either by uploading it right from your browser or by using a URL. Nice. Next up, there is a small quality of life improvement to the filters and data tables inside of the UI. Last release added collapsible sections to various places inside of the UI, like the automations page, but this release now adds a new collapse all and expand all sections button, which is pretty cool. We also see a nice improvement that means that filters are remembered if you change pages and come back, or if you even refresh the page, so long as you use the same browser tab. You can now group entities under the expose tab in voice assistance by area and domain. And finally for the UI stuff, you can now collapse sections inside of blueprints if you have a particularly long blueprint and you want to keep things tidy. Next, back in February, a new feature was added that automatically cleaned up any old and unused refresh tokens for logged in devices. However, some users had scenarios where they might want to keep certain tokens for longer, for example, at a holiday home. So in this release, you can now explicitly mark specific tokens to not be automatically deleted so that you don't have to worry about them expiring. NFC tags in Home Assistant have also seen some love in this release too, and now become their own dedicated entity. In previous releases, an NFC tag in Home Assistant was never a regular entity and really only showed up in the tag list or when you wanted to use them in, as a trigger in an automation. But now tags are their own entity, which means that it can show some additional information like the last time it was scanned and by which device, which adds some additional automation capabilities. Finally, for the big stuff, Matter was upgraded to the latest 1.3 spec, which was just released back in May and adds support for a bunch of different device types when those actually start to release. And it also adds an improvement to the way certain devices are pulled and should improve the amount of network traffic, especially with thread devices, which is a real boost, along with various other optimizations and fixes. As for the little things this month, Firstly, alarm control panels can now have a default code set for all alarm entities. There is a new filter for templates which allows you to add values together. There is a new automation action called sequence which essentially allows you to logically group multiple actions together for more complex automations. The real link integration now supports PIR and battery sensors. And finally, the Teslemetry integration has now been hugely expanded to add a whole array of sensors. As for new integrations, we have six new integrations in this release, including Air Gradient, which provides air quality, and a new storage acceleration integration, which speeds up compression of some assets that are used in Home Assistant, which should hopefully speed things up. We also see four new integrations available to set up from the UI instead of via YAML. And finally, in terms of breaking changes this month, it is a very small list that we love to see that with nothing major jumping out, but do make sure to have a read for yourself to make sure nothing applies to you. And that's about it for this release. Another great update in the books with something for everyone really like the contextual conversation aspect of LLMs and would really love to see a good local LLM 
with the same capabilities as I think that opens up a ton of possibilities. So that's probably my favourite feature from this release, but I would love to hear what your favourite feature is down in the comments as always. The conditional sections one is actually really cool too, and I suspect that one is going to be really popular for those of you using the new drag and drop UI. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.